Is here, Wrestling Observer Alive. And yes, Mike Sempervivi appears to be here right now. Is that right, Mike? I'm here. What I happened think. yesterday? Well, I think it was a big conspiracy. You know how I feel oh, yeah? about this. You know how I feel about this Crown Jewel show. Not a big fan of it at all. Don't like WWE going over there. And as you remember, uh, WWE pulled the feed on uh, the, the Saudis and over uh, some things that happened. And that, that led to some other issues that, that happened on a tarmac. But we won't get into that. But being armed with that knowledge, I believe that they contacted the people back home at Comcast. And since I am all xfinity out, I think it was a big Peacock, NBC, Universal, Xfinity, WWE conspiracy that took place against me you to knock me off the air yesterday the and not let me talk about that conspiracy show. Conspiracy theorist I have ever heard, Mike. I was complaining about the production, and you see they oh, pulled the plug on I me. See. You saw what happened. You well, heard what my happened. My point you was were you, were, you were raving about the show. Why would they want you kicked off the air? Are you going to kick me off the air right now because I'm about to talk about how great this show was? Well, you're we'll find out because there's a bomb cyclone in the uh, forecast. D- yeah. But listen. Out? Listen, everybody. I had a conversation with somebody that was at the show yesterday. On the card, in fact. And what they said was, in the, the gist of it is, you can say whatever you want about the Saudi government and the fact that WWE is basically running... Whatever you want to call this show here, this propaganda show. But at the end of the day, the fans, the fans that buy their tickets and they go to the building and they cheer and they boo and they sing Edge's song on the way to the ring and they're hot for the entire show. They just want to go and they want to watch WWE and they want to have a good time. And the crowd at the show yesterday was a great crowd. And I think that the combination of them being a great crowd, which made for a better show for us watching at home, and also being able to perform in front of a great crowd, I think it made for a better show. And it made for a better show in two ways. Number one, it was more fun to watch. And number two, it was more fun for the wrestlers. And I think they had more fun. And thus, we had a much better show. This was, I believe, in the ring, bell to bell, the best WWE action that we have seen in 2021. I can't think of a better show that we have seen than this one. Virtually every match was good. Some of the matches were great. The worst match wasn't even that bad. Edge versus Seth Rollins in Hell in a Cell. That was the opener. They went 27 minutes. I mean, I thought that anything longer than 18 was going to drag, but this did not drag. And they had enough stuff to do. They paced it well. Edge ended up getting his revenge. It was a happy ending. This was a really, really good opener. I would go as far as to say an excellent opener. I wouldn't say it was a five-star match. I heard a couple of those yesterday, but let's be real. But it was a really, really good match. Mansoor and Mustafa Ali, this match was really good. And they gave them time. And granted, he's he's a hometown guy, but this Mansoor, I mean, take this guy out of Saudi Arabia. Just watch him in the ring. He is a great babyface. He is a great classic babyface. He's a great babyface worker. He's got a great baby face. He was really good, and he won. And then I heard co- complaints afterwards because Ali beat him down afterwards. But he beat him down afterwards because then they brought out, I forget the guy's name, but he was like a silver medalist in karate at the Olympics or something like that. Tariq Hamidi. And he pulls his hood off, and this place goes crazy. And all these roles say, oh, you're some tough guy. And then he gets kicked right in the face, and the place goes nuts. And then he hugs Mansoor. Dude, this was great. That was a great moment. We had RK Bro beating AJ and Omos. I don't know if I could say it was great. It was a good match. It was a raw match. Riddle came out on a camel. Omos can do virtually nothing. But, I mean, you had you know Randy Orton, who's on fire. Like, the last two shows, Randy Orton has been tearing it up. Riddle, AJ Styles, they had a very good match, and RK-Bro retained the titles. Zelina and Dewdrop, I mean, they got the longest of any match during the tournament almost by double. And that was a six-minute match, by the way. They got five minutes and 55 seconds, and Dewdrop is a good worker, and Zelina Vega held up her end of the bargain. Zelina wins with the code red, the funniest part of which is all of the announcers freak out that she won with the code red, even though 
She does it in every match. They were like, oh my God, what was that? I can't believe what she just did. I thought, I know she doesn't have a lot of matches and she loses all the time, but she has a code red in every single solitary match that she does without fail. This time, the announcers are stunned. And she pins Dewdrop. She is the Queen's Crown, the first ever Queen's Crown winner. Goldberg and Lashley, when I saw that they had 11 minutes, I was like, oh boy. Goldberg has not had great matches of late. But you know what? He had a very good match. And it was no holds barred, so there was smoke and mirrors. But, you know, the thing with Goldberg is Goldberg doesn't go in there and threaten to kill a guy in promos and get really mad that the guy put the hurt lock on his on his his son and then go in there and do a lockup. Goldberg went in there and his goal was to kill Bobby Lashley. And that's the way he worked the match. I'm going to kill you. And then at the end, when Lashley retreats up the ramp and then he brings out his buddies in the hurt business, Goldberg was not, oh, I'm going to back down from these three. He was like, well, I'll kill three of you then. And he killed them all and he beat Bobby Lashley in the middle of the ring. And another very good match. Xavier and Finn Balor, a very good wrestling match. They're both excellent at their job. And Xavier Woods... My God, after seven years, he achieves his dream. He wins the King of the Ring crown. A happy ending. The right man won, in my opinion. Another very good match. Biggie and Drew McIntyre. I don't know if I can say this was the best match on the show, but there were moments where I was watching this, and I was like, this is the best match on the show. And they went, I think, 12 minutes, 13 minutes, and they kicked out of all of their big moves. They they boom, 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 boom. I mean, I think most people would say Edge and Rollins. But Edge and Rollins was was longer. And so there was more downtime. There was no downtime in this match. It was just, we're going to go from bell to bell. We are going to have a great match. They had a great match. They kicked out everything. Big E hits the beginning and wins. Excellent match here. Becky, Bianca, and Sasha... I mean, maybe I missed something, but I had people complaining that early on they were, like, on different pages. I mean, maybe I was asleep, but what I saw was just an excellent three-way women's match for the title. All sorts of very, very creative spots, good spots. Becky ends up getting the win. I don't know what the hell they're going to do, because now we've got the belts on the wrong brands again. And they made a point of that. So there may be something done, perhaps at Survivor Series, to solve this problem. Or they're just going to get in the ring and, you know, switch off. And then the main event was Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar. And as we were doing the show live yesterday, had a lot of people talking about how tired Brock Lesnar looked. And granted, he has not had a long match in a long time. But I thought that dude, he pulled this thing off. Yeah, obviously they did the deal where they did the double down and everything like that, but I have seen matches where guys are totally blown up and can't go, and that was not Brock Lesnar. This dude is a beast, and if he was tired, he willed himself to get through this match. And the finish was, I mean, it was lame, but the point of the finish was to build up the storyline. And if you look at the storyline thus far, if you look at this as being the beginning and not the end, the finish was fine. Ref takes a bump, both guys down. Paul Heyman can't decide what to do. He throws the belt literally in between both guys. They have a tug of war. Usos run in. They do the double super kick on Brock Lesnar. Roman hits him with the belt. Roman gets the pin. He leaves with Heyman, who's all in a state. The Usos, they've retained their title. Brock's very angry, and he's going to SmackDown tonight for revenge. I thought top to bottom... This was a very good pay-per-view in the ring. This was a very good pay-per-view to pay off things that should have been paid off. It was a very good pay-per-view in terms of building up some things for the future. I thought it was the best show of the year for WWE. So what you're saying is it was a very good pay-per-view. Yeah, damn right it was. <laughs> I'll have some more thoughts about it after the break here, since I know we're pushing up on it, uh, including some of the producers for some of these uh, matches, so we can give credit to them as well. Back in a moment with more Observer Live. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.